Hey, it's Will here for Hair Guard. So, does blood flow to the hair follicle affect hair growth? It's a debate that's been going on for over half a century. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at all the evidence so you can decide for yourself. Firstly, let's take a look at minoxidil and how it works. Originally developed in the late 1950s, minoxidil was initially investigated for its potential use in treating high blood pressure. Minoxidil accomplishes this by acting on the smooth muscle cells in the walls of the blood vessels, leading to their widening or dilation, as scientists call it. With the vessels dilated, there's less resistance to blood flow, leading to a decrease in blood pressure. So as a result, the heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump blood and blood pressure is reduced. However, it was noticed early on after the drug hit the market that a common side effect was generalized hypertrichosis or excessive hair growth in plain English. And this hypertrichosis could take place all over the patient's bodies, though the most commonly affected areas were the extremities. This observation would set the stage for clinical trials that led in 1988 to the FDA approving minoxidil as the first topical medication for male pattern baldness. The reason it was marketed as a topical rather than a systemic treatment is simple. Systemic minoxidil is a powerful medication that carries apart from the risk of unwanted hair growth all over the body, potentially very serious cardiac side effects. But the fact that it has the same effects on circulation when applied topically is not in dispute. Studies in the 1980s, when topical minoxidil was coming to market, measured blood flow in the scalp of balding patients before and after minoxidil application. It was found that the more potent the minoxidil concentration, the higher the increase in cutaneous blood flow with the 5% formulation resulting in the highest increases. Subsequent research has also found that topical minoxidil promotes an increase in vascular endothelial growth factor or VEGF for short. VEGF is a protein that plays a crucial role in the formation of blood vessels, a process called angiogenesis. It is essential for the growth of blood vessels and the maintenance of a healthy blood supply to various tissues. VEGF helps ensure that hair follicles receive an adequate supply of oxygen and nutrients, which are critical for the hair growth cycle. So you have a dual action of minoxidil. On one hand, the increased vascularization brought about by VEGF. On the other hand, an increase in blood flow through the dilation of vessels, both old and new. Now, why is this important? Well, what most people don't appreciate is that the hair follicle is served by a vast network of vessels. The lower third part of the hair follicle during the active antigen phase of the hair cycle is surrounded by an extensive vascular network that is critical to healthy functioning. Here in yellow, you can see the endless blood vessels surrounding a human hair bulb in antigen under magnification. And when you consider that the first sign of pattern hair loss is a reduction in the length of time the follicles spend in antigen, it's not that much of a stretch to hypothesize that impaired blood flow might play a role in that. We have known since the 1980s when topical minoxidil was first introduced that blood flow in balding scalps is problematic. Scientists measured the scalp blood flow in men with pattern hair loss and compared it to men with healthy hair. They found that blood flow in the crown of the scalp, the area most affected by hair loss, was on average around two and a half times lower in balding men. Blood flow in the frontal areas was also compromised. A further anomaly had to do with the difference between blood flow in various parts of balding men's scalps. It was discovered that blood flow in non-balding areas of the scalp, like the side of the head, was significantly higher compared to the balding areas, meaning there was less blood flowing into the problematic balding areas. Healthy men without hair loss, on the other hand, didn't show these differences. Their blood circulated equally well in all parts of the scalp. Minoxidil is not the only vasodilator that promotes hair growth. Diazoxide is another vasodilator that is sometimes used to treat hypertension, though its most common indication is 
the treatment of low blood sugar. It was never approved for hair loss or developed as a topical formulation, but just like minoxidil, it can result in excessive hair growth throughout the body. Depending on the condition being treated, up to 50% of people on diazoxide can develop hypertrichosis. Another line of evidence regarding the role of blood flow and baldness comes from platelet-rich plasma, or PRP. This involves drawing a small amount of a patient's blood, processing it to concentrate the platelets, and then injecting this platelet-rich plasma back into the scalp. This non-invasive method has now been proven to outperform placebo in terms of hair growth for men with pattern baldness. It's also shown effectiveness against female pattern baldness. Now, why do we want plasma with a rich concentration of platelets? This is because platelets contain high concentrations of growth factors, including vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, as we discussed earlier. Platelets are also rich in transforming growth factor B, another protein that promotes the proliferation of blood vessels. According to the authors of one recent review of PRP for hair loss, quote, angiogenesis and increased vascularization of the follicle are thought to be critical for the initiation of the antigen phase. Conversely, reduced blood flow and oxygen pressure have been observed in AGA. The growth factors in PRP act on the stem cells found in the bulge area of follicles, resulting in neovascularization and follicular genesis. PRP stimulates hair growth by improving follicle vascularization, inhibiting apoptosis, and thereby prolonging the antigen phase and inducing a fast transition from the telogen to the antigen phase in dermal papilla cells. To recap, the discovery that minoxidil is effective against baldness was the catalyst for scientists to seriously start looking into the connection between blood flow and hair loss. Initially used to treat high blood pressure, minoxidil promotes hair growth by dilating blood vessels this enhances blood flow and nutrient delivery to the hair follicles. And studies have shown significantly lower blood flow in balding compared to non-balding regions, highlighting the role of impaired circulation. Other treatments such as diazoxide and PRP also enhance blood flow and vascularization, further supporting the idea that improving blood circulation to the scalp can effectively combat hair loss. So you decide for yourself. Does blood flow play a role in hair growth or is it completely unrelated? If you are worried about hair loss, the top two recommended products are Maxoxidil and the Groban Pro. Maxoxidil is the enhanced version of Minoxidil and it's way more powerful than ordinary Minoxidil with even more hair growth stimulants packed into one bottle. The Groban Pro is the number one way to improve blood flow across the entire scalp, thereby helping improve hair growth and many of the users are getting amazing results with it. We even did a study and measured blood flow before and after using the Groband and the results were impressive. You can learn more about that study on hairguard.com. Also, go and watch Alex's 90 day hair growth challenge with the grow band. It's really surprising. Okay, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.